Of course, those who are here with us, we know, uh, and those are not, those are on the internet, the things. It's windy this morning, and our camera and other things are blowing around. It's sort of a distraction, but I pray that you allow the Lord to help you get through the distractions. And, and us, I appreciate that song. It was so awesome. He is great, and we see his greatness all around us. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn to Luke 24 again, we're going to be in this uh, chapter for one more week. Um, it's turned into more than, like I said, this is awesome that God has laid on our heart back in January of 2016 to look at the words of Jesus. And as we look at his words, he speaks to us right here where we're at right now. And um, we're still looking at the days, by the way. On the same day of his resurrection. So we're looking at the same day, that morning, and things that happened on that day in Luke 24. And last week we joined Jesus. He joined, as he joined two on the road to Emmaus. And because of the wind, I'm going to have to keep my hand here again as I did last week. Got a little more hairspray on my hair. Hope it don't blow as crazy as it did last week. And, um, but appreciate everybody that shared with us last week and that my hair was blowing and I was a different looking preacher. And that's okay. We're sharing his word. And as we looked as he, Jesus is on the road to Emmaus with these two, we finished with the verse 25. And I'm going to share that again. It says, and then, then they drew near to the village where they were going. And he, he indicated that he would go farther. But they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day was far spent and he went in to stay with them and it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread blessed it broke it and gave it to them then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said to one another did not our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us. And remember we discussed how that event, the events of that day, which they were discussing and talking about, had changed the world. And as we closed, we shared how it had even changed these men. Because we read on in verse 33, that they left and they began to share the gospel. So they rose up that very in Jerusalem and found the eleven. As those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. And we see they begin to share, as we should. And that was our challenge last week, to begin to share what God has done. And then we gave you a little teaser. We read one more verse. Of what we're looking at today. And this is where our message starts today. Luke 24, 36. Luke 24, 36. It says, Now as they said these things, the things that we were just reading to you, Jesus himself stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Did you hear that? He said, He come in the room and he said, Peace to you. Jesus came into the room and he said, to you and what did they do in verse 37 it says and they were terrified and frightened and suppose they had seen a spirit they were terrified and frightened thinking they had seen a spirit but he said peace to you what would we do today if Jesus stood in our midst and said peace to you so we don't want to be too quick to judge, do with these two. We don't want to be judged to these people because I think that when I first thought that, I thought of that song, and when I begin to think, what would we do? I thought of the song that I love. I can only imagine. You know, it's a different part, but man, as again, it says, when I walk by your side, that's what these men have been doing. And these, I can only imagine what my eyes would behold. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? I will stand in your presence, or on your, my knees will I fall. 
Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine what they felt and I can only imagine what it's going to be like when he takes the church and we stand in his presence. So no judgment here on them. For we're not here to judge. We're here to hear the words of Jesus. And what was his words? Peace. Peace to you. Peace to you this morning. Peace. Followed by, now he continues to talk about this peace. In verse 38, Luke 24, 38, he says to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them, actually, his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of rolled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. Now, again, people always want to, well, what kind of body did he have? He appeared to them and he disappeared. And, but here he is saying, touch me. How, you know, that's that new body. We're not there yet. And that's not really what we're concerned about today. We're, we should be concerned about what he has said to them. Peace to you. And, you know, uh, but a wonderful thing we need to really hear. A lot of people want to get into the scriptures. They want to get into the revelations. And they want to talk about Jesus. And they want to make it some mysterious thing that we can't understand. And, yes, there's a lot we don't understand. And we won't get to we get to heaven. But it's not because he wants it to be mysterious to us. He wants us to be at peace. Have peace. Be not troubled. It is I. He, this is not about some mystery. He verified who he was. And he he wanted them to not be troubled about it. And, and again, it says uh, what it says there. But while they did still did not believe for joy and marveled. You understand what that's saying? It says... Basically, it brought joy. They marveled. And what they saw was actually too good to be true. What they were saying, really? That's what they mean by not believe. But joy came. It, what they saw, what they were experiencing was too good to be true. It was awesome that Jesus was in their presence. And here he was with them. And he's talking with them. And they were experiencing him. You see... When you look at the scriptures and when you look at what people people will say, you know, the scriptures will always ring true. How do you know it's Jesus? How do you know it was you? How did they know it was Jesus? The scriptures rang true. He had been sharing, and as he, we will see, he, he fulfilled the Old Testament prophets and the Psalms and Mo, the law of Moses. And that's what I want to say to you. How do you know what you are dealing with today is of the Lord? If it agrees with the scriptures. The scriptures will always be in agreement. Because, you see, because of the confirmation of the scriptures, we can know it is Him that is working with us. Look at verse tw in chapter 24 again, verse 44. It said, He said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was with you, still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the laws of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scripture. Again, along with them that are there today, people, if you would just pay attention to the scriptures, we will know his peace. He said, peace to you. You can know his peace today. Abide in, the, in him. Get in the scriptures. Allow the scriptures to talk to you. You see, he spoke of the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms there. They were fulfilled, which all speak of him. Yes, the law of Moses. We talked about that last week a little more in depth today than we will, last week than we will today. Which... We know the law of Moses, if you go back and read those laws, 
None of us could can keep those laws. We would be condemned to hell. I am condemned to hell because of the law. Unless there's a redeemer. Unless there's a redeemer. And we know there is a redeemer. And the prophets proclaimed it in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, which almost 2,000 years before Christ came. He says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. For the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Then he goes on. Isaiah goes on from chapter 9 into Isaiah 53. And you know what I'm going to read, don't you? In verse 5, he says... But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. That's the prophets. Again, thousands of years before Christ came. As he said, for the scriptures are fulfilled. The law of Moses was fulfilled. And even the Psalms sang about him. And Psalms 22, 14, it says, I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shared. And my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. The dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. The psalmist wrote of what we know has become history. And in, where our Redeemer came in. Now, notice what, as we read these scriptures, we read the same thing as he shared with the guys on the road to Emmaus. He has shared again. The same things. Go back. Read the Psalms. Read the Law of Moses. Read the Prophets. And remember the things that I told you while I walked with you. And as we read these things, he reminds us of the words he has stood before them and shared. He has shared about the, his suffering. He must do as a Redeemer. He has shared about him rising from the grave. He has shared about our salvation, about repentance obedience on our part to share and preach the word of God and the promise of a coming helper which we experience today in Luke 24 let's continue reading verse 46 and he said to them thus it is written and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that listen to this repentance and submission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Praise the Lord. We're not, he, he gives us a commission, but he doesn't send us alone. He sent us a helper, the Holy Spirit. But I want to say, did you see as I was reading the scripture? I hope you can hear the scriptures and what he's saying to us above the wind noise. Did you see and hear it? He reminded us of the words that he shared before about his suffering. He must suffer. About him rising from the grave, our Redeemer. About salvation that he has bought. And as we receive it, as we repent that we are a sinner. And on our obedience to him, we, not preachers, but we, the congregation, his children, are to preach his word, live his word, that others can see him and he be glorified. And we can do it because the promise of the helper. We have a helper. We're not alone. Get in the scriptures. Allow the helper begin to work in you. And to honor our Lord as we obey him with the help of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize how special the gift that we have of salvation is? Again, we, again, under the law, every one of us are condemned to hell. Every one of us deserve hell. But we have salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And Peter got it. And I hope you can hear what Peter is saying now. In 1 Peter 1, 10 through 12. I want to read that to you. Two verses here. Three verses. He says, Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. So the prophets have searched this out a long time ago about the grace that is coming to us searching what and what manner of time the spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you. By the Holy Spirit sent from heaven these things which angels desire to look into. Do you truly understand now what he's talking about? People, we live in an amazing age, an amazing time. The prophets of old that wrote about his coming were amazed about the grace of God, how that the law needed to be fulfilled and it would be fulfilled through the Redeemer, the Son of God who would come and take our sins upon him and offer his grace upon us. They were in search of this. And we have that gift today of repentance and coming to the Lord and being filled with his Holy Spirit, which the angels... They look on, but they can't experience what we experience today. People, we're not angels. Praise the Lord, we're not angels. And I'm not going to become an angel one day. No, I'm not. Praise the Lord. I experience him in a different way. The angels desire to have what we have today. It is so wonderful, this grace of God that we experience today. And it's to all people who would come and repent. So may I close this morning and ask you a question. I've asked it many times, but I want to ask it one more time this morning. Are you a missionary or a mission field? Are you a missionary or a mission field? What do I mean by that? I mean, is the Holy Spirit that we've just been talking about leading and guiding and blessing as you share with others of this amazing grace that we have received from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you sharing that in his power and anointing? Are you a missionary about his work where you go to work, where you share, where you live, where you go to school, wherever you are? Are you a missionary that others can see Christ in you and the Holy Spirit is working through you and sharing the good news? Or are you just one who goes through the motions of a day never thinking about this wonderful gift of God's grace given to you thus never sharing of his love and grace because you have nothing to share then you're a mission field I hope to pray today that you are a missionary Jesus spoke of repentance and remission of sins that should be preached. He also said in Luke 15, 7, I say to you that likewise there will be joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. I like to hear rejoicing in heaven, don't you? Praise the Lord. And in Acts 2, 38, Dr. Luke shared with us that Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Luke, Acts 3, 19, he says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Have you come to that point in your life? Have you repented? Are you a missionary for him? Are you about sharing because you have come to that point? If not, we want to invite you today. Invite you to come. Invite you to kneel. Invite you to be broken. And invite Christ in your heart. Repent. Lord, I am a sinner. I know I'm evil. There's bad in me. 
I have it. Because the Bible teaches us in Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just through one man, sin entered in the world and death through sin. And thus death spread to all men because all sin. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin. The wages, what I get paid for my sin is death. Look around us. But the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. A body may be laid in a grave and it may be cremated. But I, who I am will live forever. From the day that I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have from that point on everlasting life. That's something to share. You see Romans 5.8 says. But God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were sinners what we've been talking about christ died for us you can have that peace you can have that joy he said today why are you troubled about all of these things why are you troubled peace to you peace to you repent romans 10 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart god is raising from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. As the scripture said, whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What a time to rejoice. Today, today is a day that we need to understand. He says peace to you. It's a time to rejoice in who you are and the opportunities that is open up to share. God is in control. God's in control. Not man. God's still in control. We just need to be obedient unto him and wait on him. Allow him to work in our life. Be in the scripture and know him as your Lord and Savior. Live today as though Christ died yesterday, arose this morning, and he's coming for us tomorrow. Live that life that you can know him and have that peace. Father, we thank you for this opportunity this morning to share. We thank you for all your blessings as we read in the scriptures that you loved us when we were unlovable, when we were sinners deep in sin. You reached way down from me and you reached down from many today that will receive you and repent of their sins. And I pray that if there's some listening today that are Still the mission field that today you're going to change them as they repent of their sins and they're going to become missionaries that are excited about what you've done in their heart and they will follow with believers baptism and they will go out and share what you are doing in their life and i pray that you're those that have been there that's got complacent and relaxed in their christian life lord that you today during this time as these disciples gathered in that room, Lord, made these that got complacent and just sitting back waiting. What has happened? We don't understand. May we just rest that you said, peace, be still. Why are you troubled? I'm alive. I'm still on the throne. Allow your work to work, to, your, your Holy Spirit to work in our lives today. Lord, these that are present here, these that are, we'll go through on the internet, Lord, Reach out and save and encourage. Lord, may fires be set on fire in our hearts. Lord, as these men said when you talked, that they burn with the end. Be honored and glorified. For it's in the holy name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.